Good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Zikolo Gambula is my name. I am a stalkist from the Eastern Cape. I trust everyone is with me joining us today. I want you to go ahead and invite your prospects and invite your friends to join us on this live broadcast for Long Reach Bioscience. All right, today's training, um, it's, on, it's going to be on sales training. Um, it's my first time on the TV network, so I'm really excited to be connecting with a large number of people from all around the world. So um, I have prepared three points that we are going to discuss tonight, and um, your interaction will be, would be highly appreciated. As I have stated before, we can only learn from each other and we can only become better um, if, we, if we unite and if we empower each other with the knowledge. All right, um, so what I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking about the importance of branding. I'm hoping that I am not going too fast. I'm hoping that everyone is here and excited to, to be part of this training. I unfortunately cannot see those that are, are, are doing um, an interaction with me. Uh, however, I will be, hi Justine, perfect, I like it, I like that. I, I would like to see some pop-ups, you know, on the screen. It's going to help me to keep going and you, to know that I'm not, uh, I'm not losing you guys. So as I have said, for those that joined us, my name is Zipono Gambula, all the way from the Eastern Cape, and I am the Eastern Cape Stockist. And not only I am the stockist, I am also a sales training coach. Hi Viv, hi SD. So we're going to be talking about a branding, right? Why branding is important in our type of business. Why branding is such, you know, um, of importance. A lot of people, they struggle to see, um, you know, the relationship between branding and sales. And it is the most effective strategy that a person can employ to connect with its market, all right? So branding, it, it, is, it is a fundamental, it is a core, you know? If you want to increase your sales, good evening, leader. If you want to increase your sales, if you want to, if you want to, to expand, you know, um, in the business, you know, if you want to duplicate yourself as we are in the marketing business, you need to, you need to be able to brand yourself. So it is, it is most effective and it has been proven for over a year, right? So um, when branding yourself in a, in a large company or a large platform like Long Reach, you need to be able to share your uniqueness, you know, your uniqueness with your audience, all right? So there is Leader Z from Eastern Cape, there's um, SDV from Gauteng, or there's, you know, there's a, there's a couple of us. So you need to be able to brand yourself, you know, in, in a unique way so that you are able to connect with your audience, all right? What is going to make you special? What is going to make you um, important? What is going to make your customers keep coming back to you and not look for another distributor, all right? So um, like I would always say, remember, people, they buy you before they buy the actual product, right? People, they buy you before they buy the actual product. So um, you, you should increase your knowledge in such a manner that you know the, 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 uh, how to represent yourself within the company and you know how to represent the company well as well. So um, when we talk of Long Reach Bioscience International Platform, um, I mean, this company it originates from Asia and that alone is a huge factor. Asians are known for um, a huge health motivation, right? Asians are, are known for huge health motivation. I mean, it is the largest, largest exporter in the whole world, right? So when you have partnered with Long Reach, you haven't partnered with just um, you know, uh, a small company, right? So, um, so I can safely say, you know, do you know who you are within the company? How are you? Are you going to brand yourself? Because um, if you know who you're representing, and if you know your company history, then you will follow tune in terms of of um, branding yourself. So, also um, back to the branding, a strong brand identity it increases the customer loyalty right, which in turn increases your sales. Like I said, there is a, 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 a relationship between branding and sales, right? By you branding yourself, you are, 
you are increasing your your by you increasing your customer loyalty you are also in turn increasing your sales right uh, and, and like i said before i've always maintained that people buy what they see more than what they need all right let me just quickly elaborate on that um if a person comes purchasing um uh, or wanting to purchase a cell phone right it is easier for them to purchase a cell phone with the charger if the cell phone is placed next to the charger right they suddenly realize or they suddenly create a need for the charger so um you can never you can never remember people don't like to be sold to people they like to buy right so if you are visible if you are branding yourself enough you know it's easier for people to actually connect or associate themselves with you right so which brings me to the next question do you have stock now do you have stock where if a client approaches you now you are able to deliver so always make sure that you've got your products and always remember that people they buy what they see more than what they need right okay so in order to have a strong branding strategy you should be bold in your storytelling, Studio. Um, we've got a very bad weather. Um, I hope. I think the, the Wi-Fi is affected, but I hope you you're hearing me more than more than uh, more than you see me, which I think it's it's more important. So as I was saying, we are going to focus on the few uh, principles of branding, right? So we need to we need to know that um, you need to make um, quality the priority. All right. Um, when I keep losing you. Okay, but anyway, so um, we need to focus on things like packaging. Like I said, we need to focus on things like the expiry date. So it is between between um, um, the, the the consumer and the arrival of the product, or you have received the product from the depot. It is now in your hands. You know to make quality priority. Um, the company has done all its checks up until delivery. So they don't really have control over what happens after delivery. So before you take it out to the consumer, you need to be sure that um, that the, um, you know it, it is intact, it is still in a good condition. And also, um, I mean, what kind of, uh, of um, carrier bags are you using, right? Longreach has got uh, the carrier bags um you know uh, that are branded long reach you know that we should be using and we also have got the the, the, the plastic bags so that we have that are branded long reach when you're giving your uh, the, 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 your, your products or when you're delivering the product to the customer or to your client how are you packaging them do you just give it to them and you know um here we go here's a product without any packaging or do you take 
you know, like a, 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 another carrier bag from a, a grocery store and just give it to them. So that is very important. Not only it shows um, professionality from your side, but it shows um, the passion. You are communicating the passion that you have with what you are doing. You are also communicating to your client that, um, you know what, I, I want to duplicate myself. I want to brand myself. I want people to know me. Right. There's something that I, I do. It's just that I don't have it now with me, which has been um, working very well. Those that are in, in, in my business or those that work closely with me will know exactly what I'm talking about um, in, in terms of branding. I'm very passionate about branding and I'm not shy to brand myself because I represent a giant company. Um, nevertheless, they, I do stickers. Right. I have stickers that every time when I sell a product, I paste a sticker on that product. Right. Um, it's got my name. It's got my surname. It's got my company name and it's got my cell phone number. Whenever I sell a product, I make sure that a sticker is pasted me. I cannot tell you how many times people have always um, people have called me before without knowing me without even knowing the person that has sold the product, um, that has bought the product from, from me, right? Or the person that has used the product. But just by picking up, you know, a box of, of um, uh, a rejuvenating or whatever packaging that where we put our products, and they would say, I've heard about the product, I've heard about, about Long Reach. Are you, are you really, are you, um, you know, a distributor? Is there any connection between you and Long Reach? And, and it, it really works, so you should try it. Okay. And then the other thing um, that people tend to overlook, be honest and transparent, right? Be honest and transparent. Can link so that I can be really appreciated. Just a few people that can please use the link and so that I can see on the private chat. Um, they can just alert me if they're losing me or you know, or we're still connected because when I don't see myself, I'm not sure if you guys are still hearing me. But anyway, back to the example that I wanted to, um and the experience that I want to share with you guys. So um, fast forward, got a referral, and I called the client, and the client wanted to toothpaste, right? Now, this is me being in the Eastern Cape, and the referral is in Hutting. So, okay, sit in... Um, and it's going to cost me delivery and end right so i said to mr customer okay um the the, the toothpaste is 150 rands and when can you please give uh, um, for 250 to remember it's 150 um you know for the one toothpaste so he says um give me two so i'll give you six for Keep losing you guys, the network is very bad. So as I was saying, so I said to him, I'll give you six for 613. 
And I'm thinking to myself, okay, that's 30 PVs, right? That's me having um, not just the client now in in um, in in Gauteng. I'm going to have someone that's going to want to 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 you know to purchase our products. So I say to him, oh, so he says to me, okay, that's fine. I'll, um, let's go ahead. And then I gave him my banking details, and then he deposited the money. Now I knew I had to act right there in there. This is not the transparency that I talk about. I pick up my phone and then I tell him what is language bioscience. What am I in this business and what am I trying to achieve in the business, right? So I said to him, this is also going to give you now an opportunity to be able to purchase the product, you know, more products on a cost price. And also, who knows, you can share with other people as well. But this is what I'm going to need you to do for me. For you to be able to qualify for this price of 630 for six toothpaste, I'm going to need you to complete a form. The reason you are completing this form, you're going to be a member, which means now you go from starting from today, you're going to be qualifying for, for the pricing, you know, for, for this pricing, the member price. I cannot tell you guys, he was so excited. He said, okay, send me the form. I sent him the form and I still explain to him for our business to, to, to take you or um, accept you as a full member, you need to have collected at least 60 points. Right. So and then I started going to detail, explaining what is 60 points and how do we de generate these points? And I told him that the toothpaste that you've bought is six um, is 30 points. So we need another 30. But don't worry, I'll purchase I'll purchase the 30 when I want to order and edit together. He was like, OK, you know what? Send me the brochure. Let's see if there's nothing else that I need. So, guys, um, I haven't only gained um, a customer. I've gained also because of my transparency and because of my honesty, I've gained a business partner. You know, like I said, who knows what more products they're going to purchase. All right. And then also the third uh, point, remember the first one we said, make quality priority. And then the second one we said, be honest and transparent. Now, the, four, the third one, it says, focus your, uh, on your ideal customer. I cannot stress how crucial is this. When a customer says they want to buy, focus on that, right? When a customer says they want to buy, give them, sell to them. They want to buy, they've already declared that. So you need to pay attention on the customer's needs, right? Um, that way they are able to feel important. Let the interaction be more than just the same. When you're focusing on your ideal customers, you are not, um, there are a lot of people that um, think, you know, they, they can be everything to everyone. No, you can't, you know. You need to focus on your ideal customer. You need to, to create an environment where they would end up buying for, you know, not, not for only, um, for, for more than what they need. You need to create the environment where the customer is actually going to buy more than what they need, all right? And then um, also the other um, factor that is very important that I've seen working as well in my sales experience is creating a community. How do you create a community? So how you can simply achieve this, you can um, create WhatsApp groups. But I prefer the broadcast way because that way when I'm sending a message is only to an individual person and I'm not sharing um, the, the client's um, contact details with the other ones. You know, I'm respecting the client's privacy. So this is what I do for myself. I prefer, I like interaction. I like sales. I like um, oh, cold calling. I like, um, you know, that's how I, I create my, my data. You know, people that I want to actually look on my WhatsApp statuses. So when I do that, let's say, for instance, I've been at, a, at an X mall and at this mall, I've had my table um, and I've started collecting my data. How I collect my data, you don't have to only be buying now, right? So I approach any person. I would give myself, this is my target. Today, I want to interact with 50 people. If five people buy hundreds, if one buys, you know, that's when I'm focusing on data collection. So when I do this, I speak to my client, um, to, the, to each and every person. The first thing that I do, I make sure that um, after telling them why am I there, you know, explaining my products, I say to them, 
would you care to share your number with me, your WhatsApp number with me? Don't worry, I'm not gonna bother you. I just want to show you the, the future um, uh, deals that we can have and maybe talk to you more if you're interested in being a partner in the business. So that's what I do. Every evening, it's a pity I don't have my diary now with me. Every evening after I've done that data collection, I go and create a message that I'm gonna send to the group you know, to the people that I have collected. I create that message and then I reintroduce myself. I reintroduce myself now in a more professional manner, you know, than the one that they have seen me when I was at the mall. Introduce myself and then I attach my uh, my brochure or I attach my, my, my catalog. And that's when people actually interact with me more because now they've received this message from me, you know, and, and now they can check my statuses, you know, when I post and I can turn them, easily turn them to clients. And after turning them to clients, I can easily turn them to business partners. So that's, that's what I mean by creating a community. And also what I find working as well with experience um, is, is um, using a client's testimony with another client, not only ending it there, get permission from the client should client number B want to verify the truth about this or want to know more information, can they contact them, right? Now I've created the community. I've got two people that have been struggling with the same problem or that have been needing help in a part with a particular, um, you know, uh, sickness or whatever you want to call it. And these people, they have now gathered together. They now have got something in common, you know, that they need assistance with and I am the solution, right? That is also branding because how many people are, are connected to them that are going to talk about me and about my experience, okay? So um, also when, when you're creating a community, you need to, to, to be able to sympathize, not only sympathize, but relate with your clients. Always try and find something common, right? If a client is, um, you see by a wedding, uh, by a wedding um, ring that they are married, try and talk about marriage. Obviously not de derailing from, the actual reason why you are interacting with the client, all right? So people, they love it. They love it so much when you pay attention to them more than the same itself. That's when they actually warm up to you, right? That's when they actually, I, I, I've had clients where they would even worry um, meeting me at the mall, they would ask me, yo, is it not expensive for you to pay here, to be here? Um, you know, like wanting to help me more because I have created an environment where they are comfortable dealing with me and they would be knowing me on a, for the lack of a better word, on a personal level, you know? I won't be just a um, uh, 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 um, long reach distributor to them but I would be someone that's caring about them. I would be someone that's really interested in solving their problem, right? Okay, and then the other fundamental factor is brand from inside out. When you're branding from inside out, you need to understand and share the culture of Longridge, right? You need to always find what resonates with you from the company and let that be your point of departure. You need to be able um, to, to, to understand the vision of the company, right? When you understand the vision of the company, it's easier for you to find something that you can resonate with, that you will be able to communicate with your clients. All right. So um, people, they respond, they respond warmer to that. They respond warmer to, 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 to you, you know, um, knowing exactly what you're talking about and, and, and showing um, confidence. Right. And then by them talking about you or by them talking about the experience they've, they've had, that is also part of branding yourself. You've got people that are actually doing your work in your absence. And then also, um, 
I think I, I'm quite good with this one, you know, creating a fun, a, a fun environment when, when you're dealing with, with the, with the customer or with, with the client, don't only be, um, I don't know how to put it. I don't want to say stuck up, but don't don't be don't be uh, too professional in the manner that you know. I want to buy a toothpaste. Here's a toothpaste, one fifty. Da da da. Done. No, you you need to make it fun. You need to make it fun for your clients. You need to um, let's say for instance, someone has bought um, a cordyceps militaries, and there's something funny that was shared in the group about uh, in, in your work WhatsApp group about the, the cordyceps. Make sure that you share it with, the, with your client, you know. Um, people, we need to build relationships. We need to build relationships with our clients. We need to build relationships in such a manner that um, whenever they think of long reach or whenever they think of giving a solution to a problem for someone else, you come up in the picture, all right? For me, that's what branding is about. Um, I hope you have um, you have enjoyed um, that part or that segment of, of the training. And then now I'm going to talk about the characteristics of sales career failures, okay? There's quite a lot. So there's quite a lot why people would, would actually fail you know, in the business. And after that, like I promised you earlier on, then we are going to go through positioning yourself and how you're going to position yourself in such a manner that you are able to avoid or change all these negative or all these uh, failures to positivity and also to you winning, right? So um, the one thing that people need to understand in the business be it sales. Remember sales, sales is huge. When we're talking sales, everything and anything that we do, it, 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 it evolves around sales, all right? Be it a doctor, be it you're selling, you're selling a service, be it you're selling something tangible, be it you're selling whatever, it revolves around selling, all right? So, um, so now I'm gonna go through, um, you know, the characteristics of the sales career and, and I want you to understand before we go through this and hammer it on your head that you are responsible for your own success or failure. You, the person that you see in the mirror right now, if you are responsible for your own success or failure, right? So um, the first thing that would lead many people to actually failing in their careers is not believing in themselves, right? There's a saying that I like so much, and I, I say to my kids as well, when they say, mommy, I can't do this, or this is difficult for me, or whatever, I always tell them, if you think you can, then you can. And if you think you can't, you are also right, you can't, right? So it is very important what you teach yourself. It is very important what you say to self, right? Only speak positive to self. Only speak things that will encourage you to do more, things that would actually boost, you know, your, your confidence. You know, when you talk, you, you talk with assertiveness because now you believe in yourself. So a lot of people, they fail in the sales career or in their uh, uh, businesses in general because they, they don't believe in themselves. And then also they don't believe in their product. I cannot stress this enough. A lot of people, like today, not any other day, I'm, I'm not a very difficult person to sell to, but <laughs> I, I need, I need, you need to, you know, to, to do the sales process correctly. Today, I had someone calling me from, I don't know if it was an insurance or whatever company. So this person says, hi, um, um, is this, um, um, is this Miss, Miss Gambula? I said to her, um, who is this? And then she responds, this is so-and-so from so-and-so company. And um, I would like, uh, there's a product that I would like you to look at and whatnot. I said, okay, you know what? First of all, the big turn off for me, right? Firstly, I just wanted to hear where you're from before I can actually say this. The big turn off for me was you not getting my name right. You do not call someone and you're wanting to sell something to them and you get their name wrong. 
right? That shows the, how much you believe in your product. That shows how confident you are by with what you're about to give or sell to the client, all right? So where am I going with this? If you fail to believe that your product or service is the best, it will show. It will show in how you're presenting it. If you are saying when you're talking about long reach or when you're introducing yourself, you are saying, hi, my name is Zippo. Um, I'm selling toothpaste. They say it works. They say, you know, you need to watch and, uh, the, the words that you are using. Once you are comfortable, you know, and you know exactly what you're talking about, you speak with confidence. And when you believe in your product, you've used it, you experienced it, there's no even need for you to make reference to language. Then that's when you start talking about yourself. And then also, the other thing that people fail, and I've struggled with this myself, and, and I would like to think I'm on the right path now because I'm still fixing this. Failure to set and achieve the goals. Failure to set and achieve the goals and failure to plan. We've heard it. Your dreams are valid. You've been dreaming. Like, it is time to act. It is time to take action. It is time to not only to just dream, it is time to actually apply. So set your goals and act on them, right? When you fail to define and achieve the specific long-term, even short-term goals, you're going to get what you want. All right, and then the other thing that is the one characteristics, no matter how much we want to shy away from it, you are lazy. Your people are lazy. People are lazy to work. People are lazy to work. You have joined this profession. Firstly, if I can deal with a bit, sorry. When you, what is the reason that you have joined this business? Did they say you invest the chicken and you get two cows? <laughs> really? Do you understand? Stop being lazy. People, they fail because they're lazy. They always leave things to the next day, to the next day, to the next day, and not actually taking plan. And also the other thing that a lot of people struggle with, and this one, it needs practice. It needs consistency. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you how to actually overcome this, is the failure to understand how to accept rejection. People fail to accept rejection. When they've been told by five people, no, then, then that's it. Or even three people, no. Then they come back and say, ah, but these people, they don't want to buy this product. Ah, but these people, they don't, and they don't want to do this network marketing. But what do you want? When, when has uh, your business now started being about the people? Do you understand what I'm saying? So um, to accept rejection, you need to continuously get rejection. Have you heard the saying that, um, and this is actually me, you know, I, I, I hurt, I let something hurt me until it can't hurt anymore. So that when I experience it the next time, then it won't have the same effect on me. So to, to accept, to be able to accept rejection, you need to keep getting rejection. When you're talking to a number of 10 people selling one toothpaste and, and, and nine of them buy, then it means you need, um, you need to talk to, to more people because you've only gotten one rejection, do you understand? And now you're going to be all geared up to go and, you know, and look for more clients because now you've sold, you've sold the nine. That should be the same behavior that you have when you have sold one toothpaste and you have spoken to 10 people. The people that have been with me on trainings, um, I've said this before, and I want to share it with you guys. When someone says no, quickly turn that no into a yes. How do you do that? You just say this person is, is no, it simply means not yet. And this person is the one that's losing out to not you. Remember, you've got a, a fundamental, a phenomenal business, a big business that you want to bring to this person for them to change their lives for better. And they say no. Simply tell yourself no means not yet. And this person has lost. And you, you actually bring it across to them that I am so sorry that you, you are actually losing out. But when you're ready, let me know. Make, make sure that you know that they are losing. And make sure that they see your statuses when you post. Make sure you check, you check on them. Make sure you send, you miss, you accidentally or mistakenly send um, um, achievements to them by mistake, right? And error. <laughs> All right.
right. And then also, um, the failure to master the knowledge of your products. We have spoken about this, guys. We have spoken about this so many times. And what I want to add on that as well, we've got more than 2,000 products in our company. When I said also, when I spoke about branding, find a product that resonates with you. Find a product that's going to take to your, that's going to talk to your audience, you right? And then you focus on that, okay? And then you fail, and also the failure to learn the, the fundamentals of sales. It is very important to understand what is sales, what is needed in the sales process. And the only way you can empower yourself in knowing the fundamental of sales is by listening to videos. It's by reading. And it's actually, I believe a lot in taking action. I believe a lot in, in actually doing something until it becomes, you know, a natural or it becomes a norm. So if you don't have a clue at all on how to sell, be it you're selling the tangible product, be it you're selling the compensation plan, but you need to do it so many times and learn from other people so many times that you are able to master it yourself, all right? And then also people, they fail to understand the customer and meet their needs. People say, don't make the sale be about you. I've said this so many times. The sale, it is not about you. The sale is about the customer. And also don't make the sale about, um, don't make the sale about money. Don't make the sale about money. That is very important. When you are genuinely have, helping people or you are, you know, on Honestly, help one with the problem that they have. Do you know that the, the universe listens, you would actually make more? Do you know that if you if the planning or the idea or the conversation started off by you selling the, the oil because of stretch marks or whatever that the client is, is struggling um, with, do you know that you would end up by uh, selling the soap and um, the bum soap and the SOD because you paid attention to the client? So understand the customer and meet them at the point of their needs, right? And then also the failure to overcome objections right this is very similar to the rejection but when a customer is re uh, raising um a, a, an objection oh this is actually quite you know <laughs> quite a, a complex issue but you need to let's say uh, they uh, don't don't think in terms of the solution when it when someone is raising an objection don't think in terms of the short solution because when you start doing that, let's say now argumentatively they say, um, but an X, um, uh, X company's toothpaste does one, two, three, right? Refrain from, from responding to the customer uh, finding the solution. No, focus on your USPs. Focus on your unique selling points. What makes yours best? without crashing, without talking down, without talking bad about the, about what the customers have, the objection that they are raising, all right? And then other people, they can't cope with change. We've spoken about this even on yesterday's training, you know, where people, they cannot cope with change. Some run when they can't cope with change. Some, they look for what they perceive as greener pastures when they can't cope with change. But if you know exactly the dynamics and you know um, what, what happens in the economy and and you know and you you understand exactly you know the the I don't want to say the value chain but you know within 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 the um, the, the, the 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 sales process then then you would know when it's time to plant you won't you won't be you you won't be looking for always for comfortable um you know for comfortable um situations sorry i just got distracted there and then also um people they can't follow rules rules are there for a reason rules are there for a reason you need to follow rules for reason. they are not just just for fun there's a reason there's a reason for instance an sd or whoever a leader in your team would say when you wake up and this is a simple simplest thing that people don't get right and you ask yourself how do they need people when you wake up in the morning be it in the network marketing business or not the first thing that you do you greet in the group you greet in the group that group whatsapp group it's your office 
right? So there's a reason why there's that a rule, you know? People, they would follow, they would follow on, on your doings as the leader. And, and the, the, the mistake that people do, especially salespeople, they like to think that rules, they are meant for other people. No, leaders, rules are made for you. Rules are made for you, not for the other person. So whatever you apply, your, 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 your success line is going to be learning from that, right? So you need to be able to follow rules and allow yourself to be led. When you allow yourself to be led, trust you me, you become a, a leader. Because not only you are learning from your, from your upline or from your business partner, but you will take whatever positivity and you are applying also to your success line. And your success line will continuously do the exact same thing that you are doing. So remember this, leaders, always follow rules. Rules are there for a reason and allow yourself to be led. Thank you. And then also, oh, okay, can't, uh, <laughs> not getting along with others, you know, not getting along with others. Actually, not, let me not, um, let me not shy away from this. Okay, let me talk about it. Um, sales is never a solo effort. Sales is never a solo effort. You need your business partners. You need the, the people next to you. So you remember when, when, when you are doing, uh, when you are selling something or when you have the one goal or the one dream or the one vision, actually, the one vision that you are trying to achieve as a company, you working solo is not going to help. You're not going to reach that. So it is very important to um, to to get along with your uh, with your business partners. It is very important to 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 be of unity. You know that way it is important. It would be easier for you to be sell to be to be helped or assisted with someone in Bloemfontein or even someone in Nigeria because you have created that right. So very important leaders. We all need each other, and in any workplace, as long as there is a sale involved or a service that needs to be sold, remember, sales is not a sort of effort, all right? And then also, other people, they get too damn greedy. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. I am a firm believer of one plus one is two, than two plus zero is two, if you know what I mean. I would rather have made my 10,000 from 10,000 people than making it from one person. So don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Remember what I said before. When you are doing something because you seriously want to help the person, you end up making more. You end up getting more in return. Being greedy is it's the satisfaction of a moment now. It only ends me. Because people now, when they leave you, they're not only going to be feeling you. I, I don't want to. Uh, I, I don't want to come go back to that client or whatever. They would suffer. You know what we call cognitive dissonance. Because now they are sure. Was it really worth it? Was it? Was it? Was it good that I've paid this amount of money for for whatever? Do you understand? So don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. The little that you are making, it is enough. It will add to another little, and the Lord will meet you at the point of your needs. Right? And then also, failure to deliver what you have promised. So I've spoken, I've touched up, up, about it on when I was talking about, about branding. When you are, when you are, don't, don't over, don't over promise and under deliver. Right? Don't, when you are failing, it goes back also to transparency. Don't. Try not to fail or don't fail, actually. Don't even not try. Don't fail to deliver. Deliver what you have promised. And should you should you come across um, a speed hump or, you know, communicate with the client in any form of relationship. You selling, you selling a product to a client and the client's paying for it, that is an exchange. That is already a relationship. Communication is key. Communication is very important. Mr. Customer, the, the courier company couldn't come today. I'm unable to deliver. They have promised one, two, and three, and I'll surely deliver to you on this date, right? And then also, I think I feel I need to touch on this. When you are selling the product and you are selling the benefits, and the person asks you, how long does it take to work? How do you know how long does it take to work? 
How do you know? Because I've had people saying, I it works very fast. Two days, you'll be fine. Banna, are we the same? No, we are not the same. And we can never respond the same to any product that we use. So don't overpromise. Don't overpromise. Always play it safe with the customer, right? And then also, um, people they fail to understand that luck or success it comes with hard work. I touched on it when I spoke about being lazy. Hard work, hard work, hard work, hard work. Always try and find ways of increasing your sales. I'm gonna share a story with you guys. Some they know it that are in the, the WhatsApp groups with me. Um, one of the days, I think two weeks ago, it was very quiet at the mall. And we had a pop-up and exhibition trying to interact with people. And it was very quiet. And, and I said, okay, it's quiet. People don't have money. Luckily, our packaging is, is great with long reach. I opened my box of tea and I started selling my tea loose. I opened my, uh, my box of uh, my packet of sanitary napkin and I started selling it loose. I opened my panty liners. I started selling them loose. I opened my coffee. I started selling them loose. Do you know that I, I made almost 3,000 rings? So always adapt to change. Always think of the solutions of, okay, this is the problem now at hand. How do you deal with it? People, they don't have 220 or however much to buy a box of tea. Sell them three tea bags, let them try it. Our tea bags, likely you don't use it once and throw it away. Do you understand what I mean? Sell them five painty liners. Do you know how much people have got now that have put orders because they have tried the product and it worked, now they want to buy a month end. All right. Remember when we started this, this is also a very important um, uh, um, factor that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get to. We said you are responsible for your own success and you are responsible for your own fa uh, failures. Stop the blaming game. People, they fail in their sales careers because they blame others when the things don't go right. Don't blame the next person when things don't go right. Don't only want to rejoice with your business partners when things are smooth. Look in the mirror and blame yourself. And you're only going to blame yourself if you're really interested in growing yourself. Because by doing that, you are not only focusing on the good things about yourself, you are also taking the bad things. And now you're going to be able to strategize and think, how do I go about fixing this problem? How do I go about um, um, better, uh, bettering myself in, in this regard? All right. Thank you so much, leaders. I hope you have learned so much. I've touched on branding. Um, I hope you've learned today and I've touched on the, the, the career, the, uh, sorry, the 18 characteristics, characteristics of, of, of people, why people fail in the sales career. All right. Um, I don't know if I should carry on. I have prepared the positioning. I know once I start talking, <laughs> I don't want to stop, but I think maybe I should uh, leave that for tomorrow if I can have two, three few leaders that can advise if should I carry on um, it's it's positioning uh, it's not a very low maybe I should just do it maybe I should just do it okay so the third thing that we're going to be talking about it's positioning yourself positioning yourself within this great company called Lowridge we are blessed to be having you know such a huge variety of products and remember uh, Longridge Bioscience International has got more than 2,000 products and that is why I always say you can never be without a client. You can never be without a client. You own it. There's someone there that is looking for one long reach product. And as I said earlier on, find something that resonates with you and find something that's going to reason, resonate with your client and you focus on that product. For an example, if we're talking of, um, if we're talking of paint liners, or our liners rather. We know we've got a, a magnetic strip um, that is a magical, that is good, that helps um, with preventing of, 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 of prostate cancer in men. And then it, it, it helps with a whole lot of other benefits in, in ladies, you know, with the woman. Um, ask yourself, who am I most likely to sell this product to? You know, this is now, especially if you are starting the business, this is now, especially if you're still trying to find your feet in the business. Like I said, find that one product, right? You find that one product. This is now you positioning yourself. 
This is now position you positioning yourself. You know that, okay, fine. Let me take the painter liner. The painter liner. Remember, a business grows because of people. For you to see a need for you to stock a toothpaste, it is because of people. So by you joining the business and have bought only paint liners, for an example, you haven't made a mistake. You haven't done anything wrong. You 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 purchase your 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 liners and then you focus on that and then you sell that and then people are going to ask you. Oh, I've heard about um the toothpaste is also good. Oh, I've heard about the berry oil. Um, you know, it's also good or whatever. Then that's when you start tapping into that market. All right. So uh, you don't have to have all the products or, you know, at hand for you to sell them. Whatever you sell, make sure you know um, the benefits and you know how it works. And then that way um, you, you're going to fly with it. Um, that is also why when we when you see a lot of companies, you know, a lot of companies, when you talk about company X, a, a particular a particular product will come up or a, a particular, um, I don't know how to say this, but if you talk of um, uh, Z's company, when you think of Z, you think of health, you know what I mean? But even though Z, Z's company has got more than just health, um, you know, I, I must say we are positioned very well in, in, in our company because even when someone is starting to join, when they are joining the business, and then they will ask me, okay, what are the few, what is the, what, what are the few products that I can, I can focus on? I kid you not, leaders. I always touch on health. I always touch on personal use. I, I basically touch on everything that we have to offer. All right. So that shows that we are. Um, we we are we are positioned very well, and we should really give credit to us for that. Um, there's a lot to consider when you're talking about positioning yourself and doing it well, right? Um, there's a whole lot of things that we need to actually consider. We need to consider the price, and we need to consider um, the competition, and we need to consider uh, to consider the type of consumers that we deal with, right? So when we talk of price, when we talk of price, I cannot stress this enough. There is a customer for everything. There is a market for everything. You just need to find it. That's why you will never see, I don't remember seeing an ad of a Maserati because there is a market for that on TV. Do you, do you catch what I'm trying to say? So there is always someone out there looking for what you have. You as a salesperson, you need to find them. There's a reason, there's a reason there is, um, uh, I don't wanna mention brands, but there is a reason that you would find a, uh, a loaf of bread, um, a loaf, let's say a loaf of brown bread from 10 different stores um, with 10 different pricing. There's a reason for that. Each store has got its own market, all right? So pricing, it can never be a problem. You need to establish what kind of market you need to speak to now, what kind of market um, you know that you need to focus on, and then you take it from there. And then also how you speak about your product. If you understand and value the quality of your product, then you won't have a problem with that. And then also with competition, you can never, I, I personally can never have any competition when it comes to my products, you know, in terms of selling. Because when I sell a product, I make sure that I know the product, I know what I'm talking about, and I'm always looking for the unique selling points of my product. Remember this, this is very important. I always look for the unique selling points of my product. I do not talk down the other person's product. And that makes people believe in me, and that makes people believe in my product. And then when they use it, it's even more. They have experienced it, and they want to purchase it again. Thank you so, so much, leaders. Um, there is so much to cover when it comes to selling. And I want to urge you today to actually take whatever you have learned and put it into practice. When you are leaving here, um, you know, write down, you know, write the few notes down. How are you going to polish yourself? How are you going to brand yourself? 
We've got the green bags, um, long reach bags. Those are not only for long reach distributors. They are for, for any person in the streets, any person that's shopping from a grocery store, they can use our long reach products. So start thinking out of the box, start buying the plastic bags that are, 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 are branded long reach, start getting stickers and putting on your, on your, on your, on your products. Profits is very sweet, leaders. Profits on your product is very, very sweet. I thank you all so much for your time. I thank you that you have lent me your ear tonight. And I'm really excited to take this to the next level. I'm also going to be learning and be sharing what I have learned through my sales career and through my experiences. I thank you so much, leaders. You all have a blessed evening. Thank you.